from working with more than 70 clients and seeing much more Notion systems, I have seen the same mistakes being repeated time after time. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you which are the top seven mistakes that I have seen in Notion systems for businesses. So you don't make them. Mistake number one is overcomplicating your setup. I have seen countless times people coming to me with help because they have built something so humongously big that there is no way that nobody can use it. And typically, all the time that they have spent creating that system is gonna go to waste because we are going to start from scratch. So if you want to avoid spending all the time building something that nobody is ever going to use, you can have in mind these two things. First of all, every page that you have in your Notion should have one purpose only. So this means that we don't want dashboards with lots of information. We just want single purpose pages. For example, I have this page that is leads. What can I see here? All my leads. I have a page with this with clients. What can I see here? All my clients. That's it. It's one purpose. Client projects. Here I have all my client projects. SOPs and documentation. That is it. This is all I see in this page. So in every single page, I only have one thing and that is it. And tip number two to don't overcomplicate your setup is to keep the properties that you have in your databases to a minimum. Because the more properties that you have, the more upkeep you're gonna need to keep those properties up to date. So every time that you are thinking about including a new property, please don't try to think if this is really necessary and even try to live without it for some time and see if you miss it. Okay, mistake number two is neglecting automation. Right now, Notion already has automation inside of the app. So when something happens within the app, something else happens within the app. But we can also pair that with other tools. So when something happens in one app, let's say, I don't know, Stripe, we receive a payment, something happens inside of Notion. Let's say a lead converts to a client. So this is really where the time saving comes from using Notion repeatedly. But some people just don't know that this is possible. And this is what I'm trying to show in my videos, all the opportunities that we have to automate a lot of the processes that we are doing every time. Because basically, if you just don't know what can be automated and you don't do it, your competitors will. And therefore, they will be able to fulfill clients and do everything with fewer people or with a team that is smaller than yours and therefore cheaper and therefore they're gonna become more competitive. So this is not a matter of whether you should automate or not. Because having a system without automation is like having a Lamborghini with three wheels. And now, mistake number three, inconsistent use. I have made this mistake in the past that I built something that it was a little bit complex for a client, but then his team was not able to use it because it was too complex. So it is no use that we build something that then your team is not going to end up using. Because remember, if you've been seeing more videos of this channel, our objective and the reason why we are building the systems that we are building is so that we can be free as business owners. So others can do the job and we can just oversee what is happening because we are no longer inside of the day to the operations of the business. So I have some strategies to ensure that your team is going to use the Notion system that you've built. The first one, and that I see a lot of clients missing this one, it is forcing your team to use Notion because if we have a task management system, I'm expecting that every single action inside of the company, it is done through a task. Nobody lifts a finger if there is not a task that is created for lifting that finger. That is kind of the mindset, but I see it over and over again. People just messaging people through Slack, hey, do this, and the person do it. It's like, no, send me a task in Notion and I will do it. So this will be point number one. Point number two, we can create personal dashboards for our team members so they can modify it to their liking because this is going to make them feel more home in their digital space. They will like to use the system because I don't know, they can place their photos they, and they can modify the views for whatever they need to see. I mean, an example of this is for example, this team member that just has uh, this, this task, or oh, my video editor, he has a completely different dashboard or even my personal dashboard, which is also different from, from my team. I have uh, just more, more things here showing because I'm the one using it. So I don't care that there is a lot of information here, but what we can do is we can templatize it. So every team member can have their own personal dashboard and they can start from scratch there. All of this is taking for granted that you have already trained your people a little, a little bit in Notion. But if none of this works, 
probably the issue is not your teams. Maybe the issue is that the system is just too complicated and we are back to issue number one, which is what you will have to fix. Okay, mistake number four is the lack of standardization. I am not a native speaker and that was hard for me to say. There are a lot of things that we do every time in our business. We always take sales calls. We always, sometimes, uh, do weekly calls uh, in, within our team and all those calls have a structure. So I have seen a lot of businesses that do not have a template for doing that or for having all the information that they are going to need in every one of these meetings on their face every time within a template or even standardizing the tasks that are created every time that a client reaches a certain status so we don't forget to do things. Because all of this helps us make fewer errors. It also helps us not lose information because everything is going to be templatized and we're going to be inputting the information every time in the same place. This just makes the whole business more clean and structured. Now, mistake number five, it is ignoring database security in Notion. Let's imagine you have a company with five people and you are the one who has created your Notion system, but then the other four people don't really know how to use Notion or what this is. I'm just going to use it, but hey, I need one property for this particular record over here, but maybe they don't know that they are creating a property for the whole database and that if this happens over and over, they are going to clutter the system that you built. So here is where we need to learn a little bit about permissions in Notion. I don't know if you know it, but if you go to the core database, to any core database, and you go here to the share button, you can make it so the members of the team space or like yeah, the members that have access to this database have this type of access, can edit content. This means that they will just be able to use the database, but they will not be able to delete properties, to add any new properties. And if they want it, they just ask you for it and that's it. So like this, this is the only way to ensure that all our databases keep the structure that we have defined for them. Now, mistake number six, creating databases for everything. And what is even worse, creating new databases for the same thing over and over again. It is not the first time that I have seen someone creating 2024 tasks, or what is even worse, February 2024 tasks. February 2020, like, holy moly. This is, the, the, oh, I don't even know how to say this. This cannot be scalable at all. We have to use single databases. If the database have the same purpose, we always use the same database. It doesn't matter that that database is gonna end up having thousands and thousands of records. It doesn't matter, because then we're just going to filter the view. If we only want February 2024 tasks, we just filter it, and that's it. Because if we want to start using automations, like what I have spoken before about, the only way to do so is by keeping the same databases, because those automations are going to depend on those same databases. And now here is a recommendation. If you're using databases in Notion, which of course you are, I recommend you to place all the databases in a databases page, because like this, it is the only way that we can keep track of all the databases that are powering our system. As you can see in each of the team spaces, I have the databases that power the team space. So like this, people can get access to them whenever they get access to the team space itself. So this is a, a very good practice to do. And finally, mistake number seven, not leveraging Notion's potential. Notion is a deep tool. There is a lot of features within the app. And while we may be tempted to use all the features just because we can, sometimes not knowing which features we can use can make our systems less efficient. For example, by not knowing some formulas, we will not be able to get certain outcomes from the Notion system. For example, I remember a client that he had an, an invoicing um, system inside of Notion, and we needed a formula to automatically kind of um, tell us which is the status of every invoice. And then we were presenting that in a, in a single view, grouped by all these different statuses. So 
without formulas that wouldn't have been possible. But I mentioned formulas, but it, this can be automations or rollups or linked databases or whatever. So really, if you are going to invest in using Notion for your business system, you should get at least a brief understanding of all the different features that Notion can offer. And if not, you can hire a consultant like me or whoever else that can teach you about that because you're going to be using this tool for a long period of time and in the future you will want new developments and everything so it will be better for you to know it but anyway if you want to make sure that you don't make any of these mistakes and you want someone to do all your system for you you have me and my team and you can connect with us in the description of this video and also by the way I am building a community in which I am going to walk business owners through the process that I always follow with everyone to build their business system. This is only for service-based businesses, by the way. I am very near of launching it, and the only way to get inside is if you are already inside of the waitlist. So I'm gonna leave in the description of this video a link so you can join that waitlist. So well, that is it for today, guys, and as always, hasta la próxima.